So IDPs uh, play an enormous role in regulation of a huge number of biological processes. It's increasingly recognized that uh, probably the majority of signaling processes in the cell are managed by IDPs. They play a role at, at some level or another in regulation of signaling. And there's several reasons for this. One is that uh, the disordered region is, is readily available for post-translational modification. Uh, disordered regions contain multiple interaction motifs, which can give rise to cross pathway talk and synergistic interactions. It just adds a, another level of complexity to uh, the uh, uh, biology of, of signaling. And uh, th there's several unique aspects of IDPs, two of which I just mentioned. One of them is that uh, an IDP does not have a fixed structure, of course, and so it can adopt different structures on binding to different targets. And uh, we see that in, in many instances, P53 activation domains, other proteins as well, uh, adopt different structures. There's, there's an example from uh, the, the CBP P300 coactivators where a disordered domain falls into two totally different topologies, helical topologies, on binding to different targets. So there's this enormous versatility in the interactions of an IDP. Okay, so the E1A CBP interactions are actually extremely interesting. One of the, one of the intriguing things about IDPs is that viruses utilize them to hijack the cellular response. They mimic cellular IDPs to hijack cells. And, and E1A is a, is a classic example of that. And so the E1A, within a region of about 140 amino acids, all of which are disordered, is able to recruit two huge cellular proteins, the CBP or P300 coactivators, which are more than 2,000 amino acids for each one. They can, the, the E1A can recruit a CBP or P300 and the retinoblastoma protein, RB, into a ternary complex that completely messes up the cell cycle. And, and so this, this small 140 amino acid spring is able to bring together two enormous cellular proteins to completely change the, the, the cell cycle. And um, it's not only E1A that does this, but other viral proteins appear to as well. And, and E7 uh, oncoprotein from the human papillomavirus, which is intimately involved in uh, 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 oncogenesis and, and uh, uh, cancer, the, the E7 does precisely the same as E1A, bringing CBP and RB together, by bringing together RB and the, the hat domain of CBP or P300, the E7 or the E1A promote acetylation of the RB. The RB then loses control of the cell cycle, becomes degraded, and the, the virus gains permanent control of the, of the cell cycle. And so that's um, one of the intriguing aspects of how this small piece of polypeptide that's disordered can uh, completely mess up the entire cell cycle. Well, I thought I'd uh, introduce uh, an aspect of IDPs which I find particularly fascinating, which is that um, when you uh, when you make a complex between an IDP and even another IDP but a folded domain, what happens is that there is just a very large amount of surface area that you get in the complex because the IDP can wrap around the, the other protein. And so the, the amount of surface area you, you uh, obtain in that complex is just uh, out of proportion. So that if you were to try to get that same amount of surface area from two folded proteins, the proteins would have to be very big. And so one of the nice things about IDPs is that uh, they're economical in terms of the amount of polypeptide that you have to make in order to make the, uh, a strong complex. And the other nice thing about IDPs is that they are, are competing with each other. And so what you find is that if you have a signal that gets turned on, you have to be able to turn it off. And the way it's turned off is that there's another IDP that comes along and um, competes with it and so this would be the cited two uh, coming along and uh, and uh, competing off the
the hypoxia inducible effect in, uh, from the, from the uh, CVP P300. We have, uh, we have actually looked mostly at small things. Some of our colleagues, uh, Julie Foreman Kay, for example, has done a lot of work on larger IDPs binding to uh, folded domains. And the IDPs that, that are binding are frequently not completely folded when they're in the complex. Uh, sometimes they're completely unfolded. And we have a few examples of those. So we have examples, for example, the, uh, the P53, for example, will, uh, will make a complex that, that has for one of its uh, activation domains is, is highly uh, uh, well folded in, in the complex with CBP. Whereas the other end of that, uh, of that um, uh, P53 activation domain makes a complex, it makes contacts, but it is not folded up properly. The contacts, you know that the contacts are required because if you cut that off, then the, uh, then the uh, affinity goes down. And so uh, it's clearly not folded. We can see that in our NMR experiments. But the, uh, the, the fact is that, that it gives affinity even when it's not tightly bound. Mm -hmm. Well, we could, let, let's talk a little bit more about um, the, the Jane mentioned competition. And I think competition is a very important aspect of, of IDP is that uh, they bind promiscuously. And many times, uh, multiple IDPs are competing for the same target. So a protein like uh, the, the transcriptional coactivator CBP or Paralog P300 is present at very limiting amounts in the cell. And it binds an enormous number of uh, different uh, disordered activation domains of transcription factors, viral proteins, etc. They all have to compete for binding to the same sites. And it's usually an IDP competing for another IDP. And Jane mentioned the example of uh, the hypoxia reducible factor H1-alpha which literally wraps all the way around its target site. And uh, its dissociation is very, very slow. And so it needs an IDP that binds to a partially overlapping surface to be able to, to, to push it off, get it off, because these things are binding at 10 nanomolar affinity. And so there's competition between IDPs and the, the variation, the change in binding affinity, according to post-translational modification that you can have rear statute, you can have switches, it's this, this diversity of interactions, the availability to post-translational modifications, the presence of uh, multiple interaction motifs within a, a disordered region. It's this that gives IDPs their enormous um, ability to regulate signaling in the cell.